Speaker, I yield uh, four minutes to uh, the gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Mass. Gentleman's recognized for four minutes. Deba today we're debating six gun control provisions in one. Why are there six bills in here? Because none of them work. But you can't take six bills that don't work and put them together and make one that does. It doesn't work that way. These are unserious, unconstitutional, and most troubling, dangerous provisions. Six titles in this bill. And they all suffer the same inherent problem that gun control suffers when we pass it here in these legislatures. And that problem is criminals do not obey the law. They're going to love some of these laws, though. Let's take, for instance, the so-called safe storage provisions in here. Home invaders are going to love the fact that Congress has now told you, you need to lock up your gun in your house. How are you going to defend yourself when your guns are locked up? This is dangerous. It's also unconstitutional. The Supreme Court already ruled in Heller that it's unconstitutional to require Dick Heller to keep his gun disassembled and unloaded in his house. That violates the Second Amendment. Think about the provision to raise the age to 21, to buy a long gun that includes rifles and shotguns, not just a handgun, which is already impermissible. This is unconstitutional and it's immoral. Why is it immoral? Because we're telling 18, 19, and 20-year-olds to register for the draft. You can go die for your country. We expect you to defend us, but we're not going to give you the tools to defend yourself and your family. I offered an amendment in committee that would let the spouse of an armed, somebody in the armed services serving overseas acquire the means of self-defense while her husband is serving overseas. Let her defend her and her children. Well, it's just because she's 18, 19, or 20 and her husband is serving, she shouldn't be defenseless. The Democrats voted it down in committee. I offered an amendment to say that we won't treat domestic violence victims as gun traffickers if they happen to get a gun from a neighbor instead of getting it from the gun store. Every Democrat but one voted against protecting domestic violence victims. Let me give you one that's not a hypothetical. My dear friend, Nikki Goser, who worked in my congressional office, watched her husband murdered in front of her in a gun-free zone because she followed the law. She had a licensed registered firearm, and in a moment she regrets to this day, she left it in her car because she knew the law said not to bring it in there, but her stalker knew she wasn't going to have a gun. Her stalker murdered her husband in front of her. Criminals don't follow the law. So let's do the one serious thing we could do. Why, why must children keep dying? Let's quit advertising our schools as soft targets. Let's quit saying that these are gun-free zones and that these kids are sitting ducks. In 1990, Congress did another knee-jerk reaction that has cost more lives than it's saved. It's called the 1990 Gun-Free gun School Zone Act. Fortunately, some states and school districts have had the wisdom to override this provision. And guess what? We don't have to guess. Does hardening our schools work? Does letting trained teachers and professional staff carry, does it protect children? We know it does because in every single school district, every school that has allowed them to carry, there hasn't just been no mass shootings. There hasn't been a single shooting. Why? Because these insane individuals, they seek one thing. They seek some twisted version of glory, which involves a body count. And they know they will not achieve that if they walk into that school and the first thing they see when they whip out their gun is a staff member who is armed and trained and they die unceremoniously. That's what they deserve. Put three of those on the news and you could stop this. So we should, we should quit advertising our schools, quit making that the federal default that they are sitting ducks. Gentlemen's I, time's I urge uh, my colleagues to take these provisions and go back to my time.